Hello and welcome back to the life course. I hope that it's going well for you so far. Today we are on our next session, session three, which is dealing with emotions. Our Bible verse for this session is, come to me all you who are weary and heavy burdened and I will give you rest. You may be feeling especially emotional at the moment as we continue this journey through the pandemic. And if we look to scripture, we see that God knows what it is to be emotional. We see that David played soothing music. We read in the words of the Psalms, all the emotions that are available to us as humans, God understands them. And we see Jesus in Gethsemane, weeping, desperate and overwhelmed. So, when we feel emotional, know that we are in good company. But it could be that at this time, as we continue to negotiate the difficult emotions, that living in this restricted way may bring up, that we need to think about what are the things that we can do in order to help to regulate our emotions. How can we help to make sure that we are in charge of them, they are not in charge of us. Having said that, sometimes it's really, really difficult to get a handle on our emotions. And at those times, go back to the previous sessions, thinking about doing one thing at a time, be still and know that I am God, thinking about when you are feeling anxious. Use the skills that we've already learnt today we're thinking about how we deal with emotions remembering to that emotions are a good and a beautiful thing made by God and it's okay and normal to experience them but what happens in these days if you are feeling like your emotions are too much As we go through the session together, we're going to be using a mnemonic again to remember the different skills that we'll be learning. And the mnemonic is pacify. So let's start with our P. It's a good place to start. The P for pacify is for push away. Now push away is exactly what it sounds like. What we are aiming to do is put our feelings that we're struggling with away for a short time. You might want to imagine putting them into a box and putting the box up onto a high shelf. You don't have to do the actions, you can if you want, it might help. Imagine that you are packaging up the um, emotion that you're finding difficult to deal with in that moment and you're putting it away for a while. It might involve withdrawing from the situation Although remember what we talked about before, we don't want to avoid difficult emotions for always because it's better at some point to take the box down, open it and have a look and see what things we can do to help us to not feel so overwhelmed. And so pushing away is good in a crisis. It's a good thing to do if your emotions are really getting the better of you. You might need to withdraw from the situation for a while. You might need to talk it over with somebody that you trust. You might need to send up a very quick prayer, please help me God, because I'm feeling overwhelmed in this situation. You might need to just take a moment to concentrate on one thing, as we learned about in the first session, to be still, to put your mind onto something that can help you to focus away from the thing that is overwhelming you. That's our first skill to push away. The A for pacify is activities. And that is exactly what it sounds like. So it could be that during the period of lockdown, you've picked up a new hobby. It could be that you uh, use going for a walk as something helpful when you're feeling like you can't process your emotions, when you're feeling like they're really getting on top of you. It could be that you've taken up a new exercise regime. It could be that there's another hobby that you find helpful that keeps you active. So it could be doing a puzzle, it could be gardening. It could be any number of things that help you to get into that place of being able to focus on something different. 
Now activities are brilliant, really therapeutic, but remember that you don't want it to turn into avoidance. And so if you are constantly turning to the same activity and yet the emotion keeps coming up for you, then take some time and try and work out if there's another one of our skills that we'll be coming on to that you might be able to use. Our A is for activities. The C of pacify is for contributing. Now, this is thinking about if there's something that you can do that puts the focus outside of yourself. And it could be that uh, you might want to think about people who are having a really difficult time. That's lots of us at the moment, and that may well be you. So it's not to say that you're not thinking about your own needs, but it's thinking about how can I contribute to the needs of others? And so really simple things, like you can pray for someone else who you know is struggling, who's in a um, difficult situation. They might be physically unwell with coronavirus. They might be really struggling with their men mental health. Praying for them can be a really great thing to do, picking up the phone, having a chat, seeing how they are. It could be that if you're able to, if your circumstances allow it, that you might want to volunteer for a local project. There are loads of different things going on in my area, and I'm sure there are in yours too. Check them out. If you feel like you might be able to volunteer some time in order to contribute to someone else's well-being. It's incredible how much doing an activity to help to improve someone else's position can really make a difference to how we are feeling um, in our emotional selves. If you feel like you are the one person that you never contribute to, and this can be easy to do because we can spend life just thinking about everyone else around us and not thinking about how we are and this can mean that we can be prone to being emotionally burnt out. If you feel like that applies to you, then you don't need to put the focus elsewhere Well, none of us need to. Do something nice for yourself. Take a moment, slow down. Do something that you enjoy, that makes you remember how valued you, valued you are to other people and of course how beloved you are by God. Our C is for contributing. When you've thought about contributing, our I is for imagining. Imagining is thinking about being in a situation other than the one that you're in. There are countless times over the last few days and weeks that I've imagined myself to be somewhere else, sometimes somewhere really great that I've been on holiday, sometimes with family and friends who I'm not able to see at the moment. Imagine yourself in that position. Or imagine that the situation is completely different to how it is right now. Imagine if you are worrying about an outcome, if you're worrying about when we are completely out of lockdown, how are things going to be for me? How am I going to manage to get on with my normal life? Will I be able to pick up the friendships and the activities and the work that I had before? What's it going to look like? It's hard for us to not let our minds go there. And so if that's you, imagine a really good and positive outcome in sports psychology, this is how athletes are trained. If they are kicking a ball um, in rugby, trained to visualise it going in over the goal. Imagine a really good and positive outcome. Imagining good and positive things can really help us in those times when we're feeling overwhelmed by difficult emotions having the opposite emotion to the one that we're experiencing and putting ourselves into that place of positivity can really help. I is for imagining. Along similar lines, F is for feelings. Just as it can help to imagine a positive outc outcome to a difficult situation, you might want to create an opposite feeling to the one that you're experiencing. So an example might be, if you're feeling sad, you might want to watch a funny film or an old favourite that you know has that feel-good factor for you. But sometimes also it can help if we're feeling sad to watch something sad. I know that might sound a bit unusual, but sometimes it can remind us that it's normal in life to experience a range of emotions and we don't need to be afraid of it. 
So either doing something that will create an opposite feeling or remind you in the feeling that you have that you're not alone. Or you might want to think about your five senses, vision, hearing, smell, taste and touch and do something that will stimulate each of those senses. That can really help us to come back into the moment if we're feeling really overwhelmed. So look at something beautiful. Uh, if you're able to get out for a walk somewhere beautiful, doing that can be really helpful. Smelling flowers touching something um, that will feel really nice, that's sensory, listening to some beautiful music. Think about whatever might appeal to your senses and try things out, give it some practice. Um, this will be different for each one of us and so work out what is the thing for you that will really help you to be grounded in the moment and to um, experience something through your senses that is different to the emotion that's overwhelming you. It could be that you need um, some, a sensation that is really powerful to help you to get back into that place. So it can be good to hold on to an ice cube or to have a hot shower, not too hot. Um, or sometimes people find it helpful to have an elastic band on their wrist and to flick it if their emotions are starting to be overwhelming. Anything that can help us to either move into a different emotional place or to know that we're not alone in the place that we're in is very, very positive and helpful and healing. And so our F is for feelings. And finally, our Y is for yes and no. This is writing a list of pros and cons of either doing or not doing something. And so it could be that you um, are wanting to weigh up, am I going to remain feeling like this or is there something that I want to do to change it? There might not be anything you can do to change your situation. We all would wish that things were different at the moment, that we weren't in the middle of this really difficult and stressful and horrible global situation but we are and there's little that we can do to um, stop the virus apart from the normal practical things. We're not able to radically change our situations but it could be that if we have been feeling um, down or stressed or anxious or sad or we spend lots of time crying or worrying the things that we've talked about in previous sessions, it could be that now is the moment to get some help, to reach out to somebody, to have a conversation, to talk about how you are feeling. And so write a list, yes and no, pros and cons. What are the benefits of taking some action? And um, why might I not want to? You may find, and I often find when I use lists like this, that the longest list isn't necessarily the strongest. Being able to see it written down can really help us to make a good decision based on how things are and maybe not on how our feelings are telling us they are because sometimes those two things aren't the same. So make your list yes and no, pros and cons. can be really helpful is if you are experiencing the same emotion and again again and again each day keep a diary of the things that you've been doing what you were doing um, just before you started feeling um, overwhelmed or particularly struggling with your emotions what was happening in that moment and then write uh, write down um, what happened just before write down how you felt and then write down what happened afterwards as the emotion started to dissipate. Was it something you did? Was it something somebody said? What were the things that happened in order for you to get into a different place? And try and make a note of that each day for a week or so. And then you should be able to identify some patterns and when you are able to identify patterns, you can work out what are the things that are helpful for me and what are the things that are less helpful.
in all of this, each of our skills from the pacify list, the key is do what is good and right for you. There's no right or wrong in this, just like there hasn't been in any of the sessions that we've done previously or in any of the ones to come. It's about getting you into a place where you are able to function and regulate your emotions so that you are able to do the things that you need to do day by day. Practical skills to help you to live life in all fullness as much as that is possible in these days for all of us. So try one of the skills, at least from the pacify list, before you go to the next session. it because practice makes perfect with all of these skills and with everything in life and work out what are the things that God has given me to be able to do to help me to live through these difficult and long days. So let's take a moment of quiet and then I'm going to pray. you God that you give us our feelings thank you that you made us to be emotional and thank you that that is a beautiful gift for each one of us and for one another and we pray at those times when our emotions feel like anything but a gift at those times when we struggle to know what to do as we live through these long days of uncertainty that you would be with us that you would speak your peace over us you would help us to learn how to get our emotions into a place that is positive and helpful for us. And we pray that by your spirit, you would be with us as we seek to do that day by day. Amen. God bless you all and I'll see you in the next